Paul here again with another vlog. I've got a couple of helpers here with me this morning. These two. There's Elsie and Edie. Staffordshire Terriers, who are very keen on some pork ribs this morning. We're doing a, I'm doing a slightly different vlog today, guys. I'm gonna take you through how I cook pork ribs on the Yoda Smokers Wichita. So it's my full wood-burning offset smoker. And as some of you guys know, other than fishing, my other love is slow and slow cooking. So we're gonna go through, gonna go inside shortly, finish this coffee off first, but we're gonna go inside, trim up the ribs, then get the smoker fired up and get cooking. Today's cook's probably gonna take six to seven hours, maybe a touch more, the ribs that I have, the Borrowdale pork ribs, absolutely sensational, but very thick cut, so it will take a while for all that fat to break down but the end product's gonna be sensational. Really looking forward to it. Hope you enjoyed the vlog. Let me know what you think of it. If you want me to do some more cooking episodes in the future, just let me know. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers. Okay, it's time to fire up the pit. Today we're gonna to be cooking on the Yoda Smokers Wichita. There's my Wichita. All ready to go. I prepped everything last night. What we've got down here is a gas bottle and this attachment for rapid lighting. They call this the Texas matchstick. So let me get you guys set up, show you how I've got the inside of my smoker set up before lighting it this morning. So I've just got some lump charcoal as the base. Smoker's nice and clean, so I've cleaned all the ash out from my previous cook. And underneath, as I said, I've just got some lump charcoal, a couple of sticks of iron bark that I've preheated on the last cook. And then over here, I've just got some more iron bark, some good gloves, welding gloves. I can just pick things up. I've got some cherry, and then an extra probe, which is gonna sit inside just to give us a little bit more uh, bit more of a view of what's happening at the grate level as opposed to up here on the gauges and down the firebox end. Today we're going to be cooking in this region here on the smoker. So towards the back end, away from the firebox end. It's not going to be as hot. What I'm going to do is set up this second probe. I'm just going to pop that through, there we go, and that's going to sit right about there for us. So that's going to give us the temperature at the pit level as opposed to up high or down the firebox end where we're not going to be cooking. So that's ready to go now, that probe, and then the, the ribs will sit right there. Time to fire this baby up. Okay, starting this thing, it's very simple, open the gas cylinder. Turn the little dial on the attachment and then and we've got fire. What I'm gonna do is place that. Fire's going nice and well now. Had that uh, Texas matchstick going for probably three, three to four minutes. And as you guys can see, the bed of charcoal underneath is nice and red. It's glowing nice and hot. Some of those bits of iron bark have started to light. So I'm gonna leave the firebox door open for the, for the next sort of five to 10 minutes, just to give it plenty of air. Then I'm gonna shut it to really start to draw some of that heat through the whole pit. There's probably enough oxygen there just through the side door. So what I might do is just close that top door down. And that way we've just got air pushing through, keeping that fire alight. And at the same time warming the pit. So 
We're gonna go inside and prepare our ribs and then get them on the smoker. The ingredients that we're gonna need for today's cook, the essentials, coffee, some latex gloves, butter knife, some really good quality Australian free range Burrowdale ribs. These are super, super meaty. Got the ribs through there. So what we're gonna do is take that membrane off in a second. We have Lane's signature barbecue seasoning, rib seasoning, and some French's classic yellow mustard. And the reason why we're using French's is to allow that rub to stick to the meat and the mustard doesn't give off any additional sort of flavor or taste to the overall product, to the finished product. So, all right, well, let's get started. Okay, we're good to go. Let's get this pork out of the cryo back. Just using a sharp knife, which be careful as you're cutting the plastic off. We're going to transfer this straight into that big silver container there. And the reason why I use that is just to contain all the rub so it doesn't go all over the kitchen. Grab a couple of bits of paper towel. Just to pat dry some of this meat as it's coming out so we don't get any leaks. At the same time, just transfer that straight across. So what we're going to do is just pat dry the skin, the meat, add a bit of towel, flip that over. And pork ribs, some of my favourite, always one of my favourite cuts to eat, but it's also one of the simplest ones. Some of you guys may have seen me prepare pork ribs in the past in my Facebook live videos, but they really, they really are quite easy. People overthink them sometimes. So, it's beautiful marbling, lots of nice fatty meat on the top. We're not gonna trim any of that at all. What we're gonna do is flip them over, and what we wanna do is remove this membrane. So what I'll do is take another sheet of paper towel, and this is where our butter knife comes in. So what I want to do is stick the butter knife underneath that skin over one of the bones. So here, as you can see, I've already started to lift the membrane up. There we go, it started to come up. And what we want to do, what we want to, do to finish that job off is grab the paper towel and gently start to pull that back. See how it's coming up? Excuse me, it's sliding over the place a little bit, but... Okay, there we go. That's starting to come up beautifully. Pulling that membrane back. And the reason why we want the smoke to penetrate on the backside, and the membrane becomes really tough and chewy when you cook it, so we really want to just get rid of it. And there we go, pulled most of that off. There's the membrane, throw that straight out. And there's a couple of little bits of membrane left over. What I might do is just clean these up with a knife and then we're ready to apply the French's mustard as a binding agent and then our rub will be with you guys shortly. Okay, that membrane is now removed. As you can see, these, these are super meaty. It's going to take a while to cook, but we've got all day. It's not a competition to cook, it doesn't really matter. We won't get those perfect little ribs that you see on TV, but I can guarantee you this is going to be delicious. Okay. What a bit of mustard to the underside. Some people use a little bit of olive oil or canola oil. Um, other people use Worcestershire sauce. It really comes down to personal preference, no right or wrong. Um, sometimes I've even applied the rub directly with no binding agent at all, and that's worked okay, but I found a little bit of extra moisture on the, 
on the meat just helps that rub stick. So all I'm doing is just liberally applying this Lane's barbecue rub. Along the back, the sides, anywhere we've got some exposed meat. rub down and they can just sit there and chill out for the next sort of five to ten minutes while that rub sets in. I'm gonna go outside and check on the pit and see how it's progressing. Alright, back out in the pit. The ribs are all rubbed down, ready to go. So let's check how this is going. Since the last time you guys have seen this, when I shut the top door, I've placed some wood on top just to heat it up. What we want to do is remove any moisture out of this wood before it goes in the smoker. So it burns nice and clean. So that fire is really roaring pretty well now. What we're going to do is just give this 10-15 minutes, let some of those big chunks of wood settle down so that they become nice hot embers and it's just slowly smouldering away. And then we're going to add some cherry before we start cooking. Temperature wise, we're in that perfect 225, 250 sort of zone. on our Yoda, wire, uh, Yoda Wichita, so this is the wood burning offset, this is a 20 inch model. They've got a 16 inch model which is the Cheyenne and a 24 inch model which is the Kingsman for those that need to cater for big groups, bigger parties, um, even do some of the commercial stuff but I found that the 20 inch model is perfect for me. For all you Aussies watching you can buy these Yoda pits from Barbecues Plus in Melbourne, Victoria, or get in touch with Grill Pro, who are the distributors in Australia for Yoda smokers. And they also do great pellet pits, as well as a few other brands, such as the Louisiana Grills, etc., etc. Anyway, we're going to let that fire settle down, let the rub absorb a little bit, and then we'll get it out on the pit. Okay, I'm ready to put the meat on. Pits at about 240 Fahrenheit. So I'm putting these ribs bone side down with the fat, fattest part or the thickest part of the meat facing the firebox so that the thickest part can take the extra heat and then the thinner part will be on the colder side of the pit. And that's it. We just shut the door down. All right, meat is on. We're slowly cooking away. Uh, time check is it's just after 8:30, and I think this cook's probably going to take about seven hours today. I've got some wood here on top of the firebox, and it's just uh, warming up a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is just take any of the moisture out of that wood before it goes into the chamber, and what that's going to do is it, it just allows it to catch fire a lot quicker. It also just creates a nice clean blue smoke that we're looking for on this cook today. Let's have a quick look at the fire situation. So, got a hot little fire in there. Cooking at, at the moment 261 Fahrenheit. And across the chamber, we are looking pretty steady. This side, which is the firebox side, it's obviously going to be a bit hotter, so we're up around 300. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see that on camera, but got a little bit of smoke coming through from this piece. So what we're going to do is just move some things around so that they don't catch fire on top. But preheating the wood is a huge tip for people starting out with offset smokers. And the other the other big tip is when you're chopping wood not to go too thick on the logs because they just won't catch fire, uh, they won't catch as cleanly and they're just going to smolder and smolder for a long period of time and create that white thick smoke that we're not looking for. Anyway, meat's on, 
we're uh, cooking, so we'll see you guys in about an hour, an hour and a half when we're going to check in on the ribs. Maybe give them a little spritz. I've made up a little uh, little spray of half water, half apple cider vinegar just to keep it moist. I don't think we're going to need it, but we might just uh, give it a spray from time to time today before we wrap it at about the four hour mark. Once that bark is set, we've taken on some smoke and uh, then we're going to speed up the cook and ensure that that moisture stays in. All right, cheers. Okay, we are two hours in into the cook. Got a whole heap of wood stacked up. Firebox end is still running pretty hot at about 280, but the cooking chamber is perfect at 264 Fahrenheit. So there's not that much of a difference in the different zones. There's our ribs, our pork starting to look really nice. What, we're, what I'm going to do is give it a quick spritz. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is just water and apple cider vinegar, just to add a bit of moisture back. I've been running this pretty hot at about 280, almost 300 Fahrenheit. So that's the progress update. Two hours in, probably still have another five hours to go. Uh, time to put a bit more, a few more logs onto the fire, and we'll keep cooking. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys, back again. We're about four and a half hours into the cook. I'm gonna check on these ribs. The last time I checked them was probably two or an hour, hour and a half ago, and I gave them a quick little spritz. But what I've got behind me is some Oran pink butcher's paper. The reason why I'm using this to wrap the ribs today is the butcher's paper breathes a little bit better than foil does. Foil will really steam and give them the ribs that sort of mushy texture. What we're looking for is just a better overall product, finished product with the butcher's paper. So let's have a look at these ribs. There we go. So that's just after four hours, the bone's starting to pull back, or well, the meat's starting to pull back from the bone rather. But that bark has set nicely, and that's ready to be wrapped. So, bear with me from all the way. Do this. These gloves are super handy. Situations like this. bit windy today so I've got to keep the edges down. There we go. Here are our ribs. Now the starting product was around the three kilogram mark so quite a big slab. Just going to give them another spritz. I'm not going to be doing anything fancy today, no butter, no honey, nothing like that. Just keeping it super simple. And all I'm going to do is just give them a nice tight wrap. I have two pieces of butcher's paper. Close the lid, put a bit more fire back in, and away we go. A bit more wood into the fire, and uh, we'll keep cooking for probably another two and a half, three hours. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, guys, quick update the ribs have been in for about six hours now, so just to unwrap them. It's a great looking bark. Texturally, they look fantastic. The color's still beautiful, it's not too dark. What I'm going to do is actually add a couple of pieces of butter just to give it a little bit of extra moisture. 
looks like that. Okay, just added a couple of sticks of, a couple of little pieces of butter to the ribs. What I've also got is this Vermont maple syrup. It's a bourbon barrel aged. Picked it up at my local store. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a drizzle as well. Over the top of the ribs and the butter. And it's just gonna add a bit of sweetness. Look. So those are the two pieces of butter and the maple syrup. Now I'm going to wrap that back up, pop it back on the smoker and have, a, have another look at it probably in the next hour, hour and a half. These ribs have still got a little while to go just because they're so thick. Anyway, that's the update. Uh, we're still on track for that uh, four o'clock finish time. So stick with us guys. Cheers. Okay, let's get a quick look at these ribs. It's four o'clock in the afternoon on at 8 30 this morning so you know it's a labor of love we've <laughs> been going for this long all right i'm gonna unwrap these I'm gonna take them out of the wrapping put the ribs back on the grill and why i'm gonna do that is just allow them to dry up a little bit again just get that nice bark set we're gonna go get some uh, barbecue sauce out of the fridge put it into a little container and into the smoker just to heat it up a little bit so it's nice and easy to apply and it doesn't leave any streaks on the ribs. So we'll, uh, we'll go do that now, we'll be back shortly. Okay, sauce is in. What we're using today is the Lance Barbecue kind of sweet. And the ribs, getting that nice crust back on. It's so good. Beautiful mahogany colour from the cherry wood that we used on the cook today. Still got a couple of sticks left. And that Yoda's just ticking away, hasn't missed a beat. It's just such an easy pit to use. Alright, I'm going to apply this sauce. Leave it in for about five to ten minutes just to get that sauce to sort of stick uh, without burning and then straight off onto this big board to rest. And then, then it's time to eat. All right, we are all done. Look at this thing. Just resting now. Give you guys a quick look. guys all done here it's been a long long cook so I think I deserve Mexico's finest all right these ribs have been resting for probably the last 15 20 minutes it's nice and warm today so I've just left them out on the kitchen countertop didn't need to wrap them up put them in in foil or into an esky or anything like that I'm gonna cut these now I'm gonna try one right away easiest way to cut these is actually to turn them around so you can see the bones the bone structure not sure how well you guys can see that but there's the bone structure now the bones don't run very straight so you will have to do some cutting on angles but it's generally not too bad now what I'm going to do is probably pick one of the outer ribs to cut. So here we go. Should repoint you guys. Good look. That should do it.
There is just juice everywhere. Nice smoke ring. As you guys can see. Very juicy ribs. Now, the important part, taste test. Mm. Beautiful. Really good texture. In the end, that cook ended up going for about almost eight hours. So it was a long cook. But this was a very big rack of ribs. Now we're talking, you know, three, three and a half kilograms to start with. So it's not your traditional small baby back ribs, which look really pretty in a hand in box. Now these are perfect for the home, for the kids, for the family, for a barbecue. So much meat, but they're just so tender. That's the amazing thing about these thick racks, especially the Burrowdale racks in Victoria. Um, super happy with that cook. The texture is perfect. It's got a nice bite to it. They're not too mushy, like you would get if you kept these in aluminium foil for a long period of time in the barbecue. So, really good flavors as well from the signature rub that we use from Lane's Barbecue and that kind of sweet. It's got a little bit of heat on the back end, but not too not too spicy. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do some more cooking videos. I love my low and slow. I've got some great briskets, got some great beef ribs in the freezer, just ready to go. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy this beer, couple more ribs, and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.